Inside the Classroom takes an in-depth look at one of Team Hardin County School's best teachers in action, featuring comments, class instruction, and insight inside the classroom. I'm a teacher because I was always really interested in education when I was a little girl and I could see the motivation behind um, all my teachers. I grew up in a really small community and being in that community I just felt like it was welcoming, that the kids were just always ready and loved school and it just really instilled a love for me to school and I just really wanted to be a teacher. It was a goal and I've met that goal. So today, you have to choose two boxes to work on to show us what you've learned. So if you want, you get kind of free choice, you get to pick. So we have a menu here. This task right here, our mastery task says, list as many animal pollinators as you can. So you guys already gave me some at the class and all you have to do there is make a list. This one says, why are pollinators important to our lives? And what would happen if pollinators became extinct? Explain your answer. So you're going to have to tell me why they're important to you and what happens if they become extinct. The teacher that inspired me to teach was my second grade teacher, Miss Whitman. Um, I just remember how well she loved all of us. I can remember times when she would help struggling students. I could see her passion and love and that carried with me all through elementary middle, high, and even my adult life, I always remember Miss Whitman. This box right here says write a letter to persuade someone to protect and save pollinators. So maybe you have a family member or a friend that's really scared of bees. I want you to give them some reasons why they should try to protect them and save them. This box down here, you can create a picture. It says illustration, that means a drawing that explains pollination. So this may not take you the whole time, but I want you working. If you have more time to do more, then that's great. Um, make this nice and neat. Yes, Kyle? Well, you have to do at least two, because look up here, oh, sorry. <laughs> look up here at the direction, it says choose two. So this is gonna show us what you've learned, okay? And back at the back is gonna be our investigation. So the, these people, I want you to go to the table first. The pencil buckets and the papers are already there. Miss Miller lets us get on the computers and do fun stuff like Pebble Go and stuff. When you put the viewer up to your eyes, we're going to take a look. I'm going to point you. You're going to see a little smiley face. And that's where we're going to start. If it doesn't work, just be patient, honey. Okay? So put it up to your eyes. And you're going to see the first pollinator that I want you to look at. So as you're looking, what do I do? Here, we're gonna find you one. So cool. Hey, I want you to freeze, and your eyes should be on the pollinator. Miller reads books to us, and she she makes everyday fun. So as you see the bee, what can you guys tell me about the bee? What do you notice, Lucy? What do you notice about the bee? Okay. Cole, what do you notice of what's the bee trying to do? What is the bee trying to do, Cole? You see it going to a flower. So why is that bee trying to go to a flower? So it can get a pollen, okay? That's exactly right. So it's trying to get there because it sees the pollen. Okay, put your viewer down. Good job. David, catch a bubble. Catch a bubble and be ready. Josie? Miss Miller make our friend reading funny books and fun books. So go ahead and take another look around and look for any other pollinator that you see in the picture. Miss Miller, um, makes um, um, learning fun because sometimes she lets us draw and draw, um, draw what we're learning about and explain what we're doing and on a paper. 
All right, now we're going to pause. You guys are doing great with Paul's. Now, this question wants to know, what is pollination? And I'm going to read something to you, but I need your ears listening, okay? Because I am going to have some questions. So, go ahead and look, but turn your voices off. So, you guys have been thinking, maybe a pollen is honey, maybe it's something like that. But we're going to take a closer look. As you see, the bee right here is trying to get to the pollen. Where? Right here. Today in the lesson, you'll see um, a whole group starting out at the carpet and talking about our learning target, our learning objective, what our goals are for the day and for our unit that we are finishing up. Our uh, class will be divided into two groups. One of the groups will be working on a thoughtful edge strategy, a task rotation, and those questions will relate to what we've learned in the unit, um, kind of seeing how the students did with the vocabulary, pollination, and if they can apply it to their life and create some real world situations with that. At the other um, station, that's where I would do the Google Expedition, and it takes kids on a virtual field trip of pollinators uh, into the field where the, the birds, the insects, all those different pollinators, the bats, they're actually showing pollination moving from plant to plant, and it gives the kids a microscopic view of pollination and just asking them some questions. Hopefully they can make some connections to apply it as they get older and understand why it is important to save pollinators, bees, etc., so that we can have plants and things to live. What the pollen is, it's actually... The pollen is actually on the flower and it is inside the middle of the flower. I enjoy reading and getting books. What do you think? So the pollen is on the bee and it's at that flower you just looked at. What ha so it got all the pollen, because what did it have? What features did the bee have that makes it um, help travel pollen? Um, I saw its tongue. You saw its tongue, so it has a, what does it have all over it that we learned? It has a hair. Hair, it even has hair where? On its eyeballs. On its eyeballs, so that is kind of like when you eat Cheetos and you reach your hand in the bag, what do you have on yours? Cheetos. Cheese. So then if you eat maybe a piece of bread, if you eat a sandwich, what's on your bread? Cheese. Cheese is on your hand, then it goes on to your hand. Yeah, so bees act as pollinators because they take this to this plant, they take it to the next plant, and it travels and it helps others grow. I enjoy doing centers with her. We do centers and I like doing activities with her. So we're going to move on to the next one. What is pollination? Oh, wait. So what is pollen? This is our next one. Have you got to see any, honey? Okay. All right, it's her turn for a minute, and then she'll share back with you, okay? So she wants to know, what is pollination? What is pollen? Look at it, guys. These pollens... And if you freeze just a second, the pollen, if that is underneath a microscope, okay, are you ready, Cole? It's not a golf ball. It is a microscope view of the pollen, what pollen actually looks like. So pollen sticks to the bodies and is transferred, okay? I enjoy doing fun activities. This last one, I want you to think about the picture you're going to see. Piper, we're not ready yet. Adam, Cole. The picture we're going to see for this one, it's not our last one, but there's a lot going on in the picture. So what do you see happening? You're going to make some observations. You're not calling out. Just take a look and then we'll have a talk time. You might be surprised at an animal, an insect that we have not talked about. I enjoy being in her classroom. 
um, cause um, she sometimes lets us, us pick out a book and let us read it at the table. All right, what animal or what insect, put it down honey, what insect were you surprised to see as uh, you guided through this field? Jayliana? You saw a beetle? Did we learn that beetles were pollinators yet? So how do you think a beetle could be a pollinator? We're talking about the beetle. How do you think that beetle could be a pollinator? What features? Lucy? Maybe it could crawl on flowers and stuff. What, maybe it could what? Crawl on, like, like crawl up on the spider. Crawl up on the surface? Any, because we noticed beetles on here. At home, what did you notice? Um, a ladybug. A ladybug. How can a ladybug transfer pollen? Um, into its big red spot. Thank you for raising your hand. Um, um, I think Shh. because it also has hair. Oh, wait. It has hair. So anything that's kind of textured on a bug kind of helps it collect. Best practices um, I've really found being in the library where I see all the students is meeting those readers where they are. So even if it's their interest or maybe meeting their level, finding things that engage them, things that make them make cultural connections. Those are some of the biggest ways I've found to reach all learners. Um, encouraging them. I have a lot of the younger students say, I don't really know how to read yet. And so I tell them yet, and I really love to boost their confidence with finding a page and showing them sight words that they can read. And just building that little bit of encouragement goes a long ways. I have a lot of kids that come in and ask for suggestions for books. So when I start suggesting books, their classmates start checking those out. Those books start flying off the shelves, and it's becoming um, reader. They're becoming readers, encouraging them to keep doing their best and. Um, I've had parents message, you know, what can my child be reading? So they are transferring reading from school to home and they're motivated and that's the best practices. Did anybody see the fly? Take a look at the fly. I'm going to direct your attention to it right now. So I want you to take a look at the fly. All right, pause. Think about this. Do you think, put your hand down. How does a fly pollinate? We're going to let you ask that question in just a second. Raise your hand if maybe sometimes you're annoyed by a fly. It's always around. It's always buzzing. If you're annoyed by ladybugs crawling everywhere sometimes, those are all important. Shh. Those are all important to help pollinate. Our ecosystem, it depends on it, and it has to ha you have to have bees, you have to have flies, you have to have ladybugs, you have to have these insects in order to have plants. Ms. Miller helps us, it's like when we have problems, she helps us and she, she sits by us and helps us. Now, how does it help pollinate was Cole's question. We're coming right back to him. How does it help pollinate? So I want you to think about it. I want you to go around your table and I want you to share. Do not touch your viewer right now. He wants to know how does it help pollinate? So go around and each person talk and then thumbs up when your table's ready. Miss Miller encourages me to do my best and try to figure it out. Now, I have one more thing to Josie add to you. Oh, Josie didn't. Are you guys finishing up? Shh, quickly. He did. Yeah, Peyton's turn. Okay, you want to pass? Okay, well, what did they say? What did you learn from your friends? Josie? David, tell her what you said. The antennas. So they said antennas. What else? Stop. What else did you say? Antennas? So what do you think? What else does, do insects have that they get around with? There's six legs. They have six legs, girls. Miss Miller makes our fun by doing fun activities and games on the computer. Now, in North America, 
Piper. I will let you have one more look if you're quiet. In North America, most pollinators are insects like beetles, butterflies, um, or bees. But hummingbirds and bats can also be pollinators. But elsewhere in the world, pollinators can be lemurs, opossums, rodents, reptiles, even like the gecko lizard. So we have a lot of insects and bees and things here, but on other continents, they have some um, other pollinators. What in this picture, shh, I'm, this is how I'm going to let you go back to it one time. What is the biggest pollinator that you see? Please do not call out. Put your hand down and you're going to have a look. What do you see as the biggest pollinator? Oh, freeze. Raise your hand if you can tell me. Piper, I'm going to call on Amelia. The donkey. And you also said a... Hang on. A horse. All right. I remember her um, because I will remember that she always encouraged us to be better. So how do flowers, this is going to be our very last one, and then we're going to let our other friends come. How do flowers attract insects and animals? So what makes a butterfly or a bee want to go, or a ladybug, what makes it want to go? So I'm telling you guys, I want you to look at that. I that a praying mantis. A praying mantis, a snail. So what is this one, this flower? Pause, and this is our question. How do, how do flowers help attract the bees or the pollinators, the insects? What were you going to think? You pretend like you know. What were you going to say? You forgot? Okay. What, 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 were the, what attracts them about the flowers? What do they look for when these pollinators? They might look for... They look for pollen, but what do they see? They look for food, maybe, so they're wanting some food from it. What else? What do you think when... Wait, mine can make They might be able to smell the smell from the flowers, the colors, apples. Teachers are important because that's the foundation. If we didn't have teachers, um, we wouldn't have presidents or leaders and welders, whatever their job may be in the future. It takes a teacher to build that foundation. They can get it at home, but there's something about coming from a teacher that just really motivates a student, makes them curious, inquire, want to learn more and be more um, involved in their education. It invests them a little bit more. And teachers are so important because they do lay that foundation for all the jobs that we need and that we rely on. Here's what I want you to do now. I need you to lay the viewer down in front of you. I need you to lay the viewer in front of you, hands in your lap, because this is really exciting, I know. Hands in your lap, hands in your lap. David, we're not even looking at it right now. We're done, okay? You guys, I want you to tell me one thing you learned today from our Google um, field trip to a field. Donkeys can be what? What is our big vocabulary word we've been learning about? Pollinate. Donkeys can pollinate. Okay. Thank you, Peyton. That's awesome. So they pollinate. Um, uh, oh, lemurs. That was a pollinator. She will be a teacher that I remember when I get older because there is no other teacher that could be like her. All right, I want you to stand up behind your chairs, and now you're going to kind of go get to reflect a little bit on things you've learned this week over at our task rotation. Oh, wait, guys, I haven't said. And I want you to think about, because it's the first box says list pollinators, things like that. That's what I mean. So I want you to walk over, follow me, Piper. Let's follow me over here. 
And I would like for your name to be at the top of your papers back here. Stop, at home. Stop. Your name's on the top of your paper. You guys look like you did a lot of hard work over here. Make a stack in the middle of your table and flip them over. Make a stack in the middle. Oh, sorry, babe. You bumped into me. If you have not been to the Google, uh-uh, well, if you've not been on the Google field trip, follow me. And we don't even have to leave the classroom, do we? You're in a line, sweetie, because I have rules and directions first. Adam? Okay. Thank you. Miller. All right, nope, I need, we have some rules that we have to listen to before we sit down. This is really exciting, really fun, but if I say put the viewer down, you're going to have to set it down in front of you, okay? I'll hit the pause button, and you guys are going to have to wait and listen. I do have things to tell you about it. All of the viewers should be working, so you can sit down at one and put your hands in your lap, okay? Go. Spread out, there's two tables. Go take your paper back. You You're out of zero. You're out of zero. I will remember Miss Miller because all the books that are in the world and nothing's better than her. Here, Dexter. All right, so as we begin, um, you are going to actually be able to look into it. If the, yours is not working when you look into it in just a second, raise your hand. It's really exciting. So for just a second, I'm just going to turn it on and I'm going to let you look and talk and then we'll start what we're going to talk about today. So go ahead and just take a look around. Okay. Well, let's try this one. As this year's nominee for Heartland, I just feel like that it's an honor to be able to represent our school and what we really, as a school here, and still that all kids can learn. We are learning and we're working really hard and I just really am thankful for the students. I'm thankful for the opportunity to represent our school and um, just keeping the kids motivated and reading and learning and that's why I'm really happy to represent Heartland this year. Going back to our learning target that we focused on for this week, um, investigating pollen and discovering how it works. Do you guys feel like we took a little investigation? Yeah. And you got to see a visual of how that it works. So can you explain pollination and why it's important that we save and protect pollinators? I want you to tell a partner right now. The first thing I want you to do is if your teacher, Ms. Hornback or Ms. Hall, and STEAM lab, if they mention to you, what is pollination? You all have done some research in the library. What is pollination? You all should be pretty good if you hear that word. So tell a partner, what does pollination mean? Pollination. Then find one, right there. Come on. All right, give me a zero. Give me a zero and a, back at a zero. Now, so you know what pollination is. It's where pollen goes from plant to plant to plant to make others to grow. The next part of this is why is it important that we save pollinators? So I know bees are really scary to a lot of people. Um, why should we try to be, make these bees and the bats and hummingbirds why should we try to have them around and have them popular and populated? Okay, I want you to tell a partner, okay? The different partner, maybe. Why should we save the pollinators? Why, though? We should save them and be nice to them, but what happens if we're not?
But what do pollen, uh, plants and trees, what do they help give us? They help give us what? Food? Food and air. You're exactly right. All right, take it back to a zero. And I really feel like...